season. Garoppolo led New England to a 2-0 record while Tom Brady was serving a suspension before suffering a shoulder injury. Our NFL analyst, Tom Waddle of the Waddle and Sylvie Show on ESPN 1000 in Chicago. Great to see you. Good to have you on, man. Thanks yeah. for How you doing, buddy? Doing well. Uh, rumor is that you said that he is worth a first-round pick, Jimmy Garoppolo. Please tell us why. You know what Jimmy's worth? Jimmy's worth whatever some NFL team's willing to pay him. I'll use a real estate analogy. Mm -hmm. If you put your house on the market, what's it worth? It's worth what someone's willing to pay you for that house. The appraisal of that house may be one thing. Somebody may be able to or willing to pay you more, maybe pay you less. I think if you look at Jimmy, the appraised value of Jimmy Garoppolo in a trade is probably a two and change. But I would be shocked if an NFL team didn't approach the New England Patriots and offer a first round pick. And I'll use the Chicago Bears as an example. I believe the Bears, after eight years, will part company with Jay Cutler. And I know Steve will yell about this in, in, in a second, and for good reason. I, I think the Bears have decided it's the right decision for them. I think Jay Cutler could benefit from a change of scenery as well. I, I believe they will pursue Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, and I think they hope that they could probably get him for a second and change. But if your personnel guys do their due diligence and the intel tells you that Jimmy is your answer at the quarterback position for the next seven to ten years, then I suggest that there's no price that is too steep to pay for that guy. Now, the, the one issue here is, is you don't get the benefit of the rookie contract. So there's money involved. But again... The NFL, well, you're a team, you're flush with cash, and you've had a quarterback problem forever. If you think Jimmy is the guy for the next seven to ten years, I wouldn't want to pay the third pick, but well, if well, I have to. Well, first of all, let me get mellow and not yell and say this in a very <laughs> monotone voice. Um, my issue with what you're saying is when you use the words like, you know, you, anything and whatever it takes, sort of, I'm paraphrasing there, whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. Like whether it's a first round, whatever it requires, you go ahead and you do it. What has Jimmy Garoppolo done to prove, in your estimation, that he's worth more than a Deshaun Watson? Two NFL games? Well, I would start with the fact that he was a second-round pick in 2014, so there was some feeling out there that he was a quality quarterback. Mm -hmm. I would also suggest that there should be some value attached to the fact that he's been in a meeting room. Whatever he didn't know at Eastern Illinois, which was a smaller program, mm -hmm. I think he learned the last three years in the meeting room with Tom Brady and Josh McDaniels and Bill Belichick. It is a small sample size. I get it. It's just two games, like what I saw in that small sample size. I'm not here to tell you that if I was the general manager of the Bears or the Browns or the 49ers, that that is exactly what I would do. But if I had the conviction and my football intel told me he was my answer, I wouldn't have any problem got, pulling the, the trigger on that deal. Got a couple things I want to dissect in your argument, although we agree that he's... If I ran a team, I thought he was the guy, first-round pick. I'll explain that in a second. First, the real estate analogy, highest bidder. I think when we say, is he worth a first-round pick, you know, when you talk about the highest bidder, this is the problem with free agency. A free agent goes to the team that bid the most, not always worth the money. Right. If you took the average bid, it would probably be more in line with the actual intrinsic value of the player rather than the team that by definition, overpaid for the guy, right? They paid at least paid more than anyone else. That's the first thing about Garoppolo. But I do think he's worth a first rounder, Stephen A., and, and here's why. He was drafted in the second round by Bill Belichick. Right. Since then, he has improved his stock. So it's l at least high second round. And the only argument against it is, hey, if he's so good, why is Belichick trading him, right? Why should we trust any quarterback that's played for, for Bill Belichick? What have they done once they've departed? Well, well, I think I, you, have to, you have to deal with all of these as individual cases. Uh, I mean, Matt Castle hadn't started a game since high school. Matt Castle was a later round pick. Ryan Mallett had issues coming out of Arkansas. I think Jimmy Garoppolo is a better player to start with. So that would be my first argument. Yeah, absolutely. If Bill Belichick is not willing to keep you, it raises some questions. But if I'm sold, I'm sold. I'm not going to the be scared of out of my convictions that he could be my answer. The flip side of that with Belichick is if he's not willing to trade you for a second rounder, if he'll only accept the first rounder, doesn't that indicate that the guy is worth a first round pick? I don't know about that. It's him. poker. It's poker because we're talking about Bill Belichick here. Bill Belichick has been known to hoodwink people in the past. He sits there and gets rid of guys. Listen, Bill Belichick is an individual that has proven his greatness as far as I'm concerned. There's Absolutely. nothing to debate that. But we can't sit here and just talk about the greatness of Bill Belichick 
and then ignore it when it comes to a particular talent that he has, not taking into account the impact that he may have had on that talent that another coach may not be conditioned to, another system may not be conditioned to, another team may not be conditioned to. We have to pay attention to those things. We can't ignore it. Tom Brady is special. He's special on another level. He has proven that. But when a guy like Jacoby Brissett can come up in there and win a football game, okay, as a, as a third-round pick, if I remember correctly, we have to look at that and say, that's Bill Belichick. That's what we did. We talked about Bill Belichick. We talked about it being the system. But then when Jimmy Garoppolo, we want to step aside, and we got people here, Tom, calling him Jimmy G, as if he's earned I'm calling Garoppolo. Look, really? look, look, if Tom Brady can do what I think he can do and what Bill Belichick right. thinks he can do, and I, I think he lasts longer in New England and plays at a higher level maybe than Max, I, I think he's got three years. If you don't trade Jimmy now, you lose his value. You may lose him via free agency unless you decide to franchise him after 2017. Bill Belichick's a great businessman. If he truly believes that Tom Brady is going to play at this level for an extended period of time, you keep, saying, you keep saying Watson. He's the shiny name that makes you think, oh, Garoppolo. Trubisky might go with, like, third overall. Do we know more about him or Jimmy G? I'm, I'm going to be dealing with Mel Kuyper about that in a little while because I don't understand that either. But I want to transition. May I? Yeah, please. May I? Please. You know. This is your baby. But first of all, you know, the voice of Chicago here. Deeply appreciate <laughs> the great work that you put forth. You so, Listen, here's the deal, man. Jay Cutler. <laughs> you know, th this dude. I, I, I don't know how y'all do it. I, I applaud you for going to work every day having to talk about this dude. I mean, I just think he is the worst. And I'm not talking about his talent, because I know as a, as a physical talent, yeah. I know he's got all the tools. But the reason I've called him the worst when it comes to quarterbacks in the NFL time is because I find him to be leaderless. I find him to be non-inspirational. A matter of fact, he's like, I, I mean, I consider, I, I don't even know what to consider him. He's like he drains and sucks the life out of a franchise as far as I'm concerned. How do y'all deal with Jay Cutler? You hate how, him so hard. You, you I, hate I, him so I, hard. I despise Isn't he him so as a dramatic, player. Tom? I, I think, listen, I think the, the leadership criticism is warranted. And I think that it was more warranted earlier in his career in Chicago. And I think if you talk to his previous teammates from his initial spin there, Brian Urlacher, yep. Lance Briggs, and, and Olin Cruz, guys that were strong voices and great players inside that locker room. I, I think there was some resentment that Jay was going to come in and all of a sudden take them to places they hadn't been. So I don't think there was a real good mesh at that point. I think the last three, four years there in Chicago, there's a different story. And I think if you talk to the guys that are there in that, that locker room now, they tell you a different story. I think the fact that he's older, he's married, he's got three kids, I think he's a different guy. I think it's valid criticism. I, I, I think that that is very valid criticism. On the field, I personally don't believe he is Satan in a football uniform. There has been some good, there has been some bad. I think two issues exist with Jay. First of all, the potential has never intersected with the production. The uh, abundance of raw talent leads you to believe he's going to be better than he is. It hasn't been just his fault. There have been times when he hasn't been protected. He's mid-30s times... now. It's not like yeah. suddenly he's going to wake up and be amazing. True, but I think that he's a guy, if you put him in a confined system and you have a very strong offense coordinator, I think he can play effectively. And I think 2015 was a good example of that with Adam Gase. But my issue with anybody who comes to the defense of him in any way is what it does it correlate with what we conditionally say about a quarterback. We don't just talk about their ability. We talk about their ability to lead men. We talk about their ability to inspire and to galvanize the troops around them because the position is so important that if they are missing something so flagrantly, that it could literally drain the life out of their team. That's what I'm talking about yeah, when I talk about I'm saying something that'll blow, your ga blow a gasket for you right now. But I, I just want to ask you this, and then I want to see Stephen A's reaction. Can you talk about Jay Cutler's toughness? Oh, I think Jay Cutler gets a hugely bad rap about his toughness. And I think if you ask players who did not actually see eye to eye with him in that locker room, and Brian Urlacher is a good example. Maybe Brian and Jay didn't see eye to eye on a lot of different things. We have Brian on our radio show weekly during the football season back in Chicago, and Brian will attest to Jay Cutler's toughness. That is one thing, Stephen A., with all due respect, that I do not agree with you on. I believe Jay Cutler has lived through some horrendous football beatings on the field. Mm -hmm. I think two years ago he came back from a torn groin in just a week. Mm -hmm. I know this is an issue that um, probably my stance isn't popular, but his toughness is something I have never, 
ever questioned. Well, before we get into that, would you please show the video? I mean, the, 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 the NFC Championship game, what is it, 2010? 2010. All right, when it's 2010. Oh, no. now, he couldn't backpedal in the pocket, but he could damn sure pedal on a bicycle. <laughs> now, let me tell you something, Tom. His, do, you, do you think that's an athletic move on a bicycle? Excuse me, excuse me. Well, yeah. Excuse me, you trying to tell me it's a Super Bowl berth on the line and you can't backpedal in the pocket, let me football, ask you, but you could get on a bicycle? Let me, let me really? ask you, I think it's a dangerous thing to do to look at somebody's injury and then project what they can and they can't do. Let me ask you a question. Yes, Le'Veon Bell, we all think he's a great player and a tough guy. Yes. Tapped out after, after a series and a half in the AFC title game with right. a groin injury. I don't think that he tapped Running back out. is different than a quarterback. You know that better than me, Tom. I know, but you, you know have to, Stephen A., you have to have your base to throw the football. I'll give you another one. Same uh -huh. year, Maurice Jones-Drew, great player, tough guy. Missed the final two games of that season uh, when his team uh, yeah, another was in a back, playoff chase. Another running back. Come on. I'm, I'm have to listen. Steph listen, Curry this time wait, last wait, year wait, in the postseason the same Wait injury. a minute. I'm deferring, my man. I'm deferring. I understand what you're saying. I'm saying to you, do am I wrong to tell you you can't compare running backs to a quarterback? Oh, I, to, think you're, I think you're undervaluing the importance and, of the base of a quarterback and, that has to set and turn. All of your power as a quarterback comes from, from your, your core. I, if you don't have a I, solid base, you've got no but chance. But that's where I'm going. I'm I'm saying to you, what's your alternative? Who is your backup? I think it was I'm, Caleb Haney. Yeah, yeah. Caleb yeah. Haney. Who gives you the best so, chance so what, to win? Who gives you the best? Are you trying to tell me Caleb Haney gives you a better chance? I think, it's, I, I think it's a dangerous assertion to say a guy who's been a competitor his entire career, okay. tapped out and couldn't play because he wasn't tough enough. I could, listen, you and I will debate till the cows come home. I never, ever said that Jay Cutler wasn't tough because I know offensive lines. He had played with suspect offensive lines for years, and he was getting beat up. He was on suicide watch. I never questioned the toughness overall. I do bring up that particular moment, though, because you and I will disagree forever. My on dad's that 72 line. years old, and he can ride a bicycle like that, but he can't stand in the pocket and back pedal. Well, I, mean, I understand, we... but I, hold on, yeah. but I guarantee you, if your dad he was 33 years of age and had the same injury, and it was a Super Bowl berth on the line. I, I think, think that, if Tom Waddle had I the same injury, I think that's a dangerous comparison. Oh, Tom, Listen, I, I live, well, Philip Rivers live dangerously. Out of that game I live dangerously. Third string that I don't know. I mean, I know Philip Rivers played with a torn ACL in a playoff game that right. they were able to to brace against the New England Patriots. Tom, I, I think Can we stop dangerous. living in the past for one second? I just want to hear if he should be a starter, if you think he should be an NFL starter moving forward. I think he's going to start at least eight games in the National Football League next year for a team that's going to give him a chance. That's not why you look the way Chicago. it said that. That's why you look the way it said that. No, I, I did not. I can't believe you're saying this, Tommy. No, and you're, go, and you're going back to Chicago, and you're going to go on the radio and say, do you say this stuff in Chicago? You I really, do, you yes. Really, and, yes. And what do they say to you? What do they say to you when you walk the streets of Chicago? It's a very, you, Stephen A., it's a very yeah. difficult job to try to, to defend Jay in any way, shape, okay, or form. Okay, okay. I, I admit okay. that, and I'm telling mm. you that he hasn't been the quarterback that everyone in Chicago expected him to be. I know be. that. I know you get that, but I asked you a direct question. I'm talking about the incident that we were talking about in 2010 and what you're saying oh, it's hard to gauge all of this other stuff I'm saying you go on the air and say that stuff yeah, absolutely and what, they, and what do they say to you Tom what do they say to you what they do say, the, the, you know what they say they say Tom you should know because you actually play okay. oh oh, oh. Oh, oh, I didn't. Oh, I didn't mean it directly. No, at you. No, 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 I'm and saying, but the callers, no, the callers, all I know is call me wait, and wait, say, wait, wait, wait. all I know is that bicycle did look kind of hard to me. Oh, that looked kind of. Well, let, let, you guys let, are ridiculous. Let me be real. Let me be real. That's Back fair. Backpedaling with pass hold rushers hold coming on, at you versus, please. I don't even mind, even if you were calling me. But I wasn't. You know I wasn't calling you. I'm good with it. I'm good with it because you did play and I did not. But what I asked you was. The fans, you're trying to tell me that yeah. great sports town, yes. that is the city of Chicago. Yes. Sit up, so, so in other yeah. words, they'll, they'll pick up the phone and call yeah. your show, and you're trying to tell me what they say to you is, oh, you played, we didn't, you know. No, no, know? no, what they say that's, is that's they, they, have the, they have the same perspective, and I tell them, I suggest to them that I think it's very dangerous for you to, to believe or come to the conclusion that Jay was capable of stepping back into that game and playing at that level. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all keep having that attitude all you want. You might as well keep Jay Cutler. You'll keep losing. I don't think You'll that's going to be the case. Eight they, games he's next damn year. right because he's gone. If because it doesn't they work know. out with Jay, guess what? We got the NFL draft. Tom, so good to see you. Great to see you. Speaking of which, Miles Garrett is expected to be the top pick in this year's draft. But will a recent video release impact that? Mel Kuyper will join us for that answer. And what should the Redskins do with Kirk Cousins? Franchise him or give him a long-term deal? We get into all of it. I ain't riding no waves, so busy making my own waves, baby. I ain't riding no waves.